four clubs there in the early 80s that you could go to and work, you know, on the off nights. I'm talking about, you know, Sunday, Monday, Tuesday, Wednesday. You could work, uh, you know, all four clubs in right. one night if you if you scheduled it right. Yeah, and they could take the little, like, cabs from one club all yeah. across town to the other club and yeah. make, like, two or three clubs a night, which is great. Yeah, yeah. And, and so you could really get good fast mm -hmm. and that not just san francisco i mean then you had satellite clubs and you know every every restaurant that had a spare room was doing a comedy show everybody put up a brick wall everywhere uh and so you really got good fast mm -hmm. and and it and people it was a fad people were coming out to see comedy all the time and so it was it was a really neat time to come up very exciting yeah I, very exciting and i feel so guilty uh, you know, when I talked to guys who had come up like in the 90s, you yeah. know, and stuff when there wasn't that going on, you know, and they had to really scrape for, for stage time and it, wherever they could get it. So the transition then or something that made it from a very vibrant kind of community to something a lot less was because of Ha. Was that the first comedy channel or the first uh, cable channel that they had for comedy? They ended up showing a lot of everybody's A material. Oh. And so it started taking away from people going out because then you could just sit at home and watch it in your own house. I think it was more... I mean, it may have started with that, uh -huh. but then, like I said, every restaurant would have a room that had stand-up comedy. Every channel had their own stand-up comedy show. Mm -hmm. You know, you had, and I did them all. You know, I did an Evening at the Improv on A&E, did that five times. Mm -hmm. Then uh, there was a Comic Strip Live on Fox. There was uh, MTV's Half Hour Comedy Hour. Mm -hmm. There was uh, the VH1 Stand Up Spotlight with Rosie O'Donnell. Uh -huh. uh, and then, uh, you know, I was living in L.A. from 86 to 94. And they had a couple of different local ones that you, you could do mm -hmm. uh, on the Fox affiliate or wherever. And so I think what happened was that it just got to be too much. People mm -hmm. just got tired of it. It was and, everywhere. Yeah. And there were so many comedians around. Mm -hmm. You know, it's like. Uh, it just the, the market was just flooded with people who were working at a gas station last week and now had five minutes and a t-shirt to sell and <laughs> and they you know they were doing uh, they were on stage they were opening an axe you mm -hmm. know and in those days they if you even if you were like the feature act which is the act in the middle mm -hmm. they'd fly you from LA to, to Atlanta or whatever you know wow. now as yeah. a headliner you have to get yourself to places you know it's very different than it was in that day it's one of the few uh, occupations where we've actually we're, we're making less you know forget about inflation you know we're making less what we used to oh, make no. and less yeah. groupies too <laughs> yeah. I've heard from everybody like oh. where'd the groupies go yeah yeah, yeah no in my case the groupies uh, is a middle aged woman who comes up to me with her husband and says we both like your <laughs> your material very much well I love your material actually I've uh, just downloaded some stuff and I was listening to today about Costco Oh, yeah. And I love that you were, my favorite one was that your son loves cereal from Costco. Do you remember this joke? Yes, I, I do. Why, it's actually, why is that? My son, that was, that's when he was little. Now I have to do about my niece. She's only three. She loves a cereal because when it's done, she gets to play in the box. Yeah. <laughs> it's so I love the clothes that you the clothes that you have there that there's nowhere to try them on. Well, yeah, yeah. I mean, how ironic is that? You go there and you want to buy a pair of pants and there's no place to try them on, you know? And uh, I, I, I tried to to, I went in with a pair of running shorts and put a pair of khakis over them. <laughs> that and I got you. busted by a plain clothes Costco cop. You know? <laughs> and, and she goes, no, you can't do that, sir. I go, well, how am I going to know if they fit? That's a good she, question. You know, she, go, she goes, well, you have to buy them. If they don't fit, you have to bring them back. That's and I go, I go, oh, so you do have a dressing room. just happens to be at my house. <laughs> Um, yeah, <laughs> that's I love, but the everyday stuff. So you did change it coming from um, Murphy St. Paul, where you had more sketch work, to yeah. doing stand up. Yeah, and you've done a lot of stand up for years now. How yeah. has comedy changed from then until now? Because I was saw Pitt was um, was interviewing Carlin before he passed away, yeah. and he said that political correctness just killed comedy. That a lot of it did because I remember a lot of people we used to do impersonations, all different ethnicities, all different you know preferences, anything you wanted to went, and if it worked, it worked. If it didn't, it didn't. But they didn't get hissed and booed like a lot of people do nowadays. Do you think it's a little bit too much over the top? I mean, all the political correctness has taken some of the fun out of it. Ah, uh, no. Okay. <laughs> no, come on, bring your opinion. Then, what do you think about that? Then I don't. I don't think 
I think that's like flogging a dead horse, you know, okay. when you're doing uh, material. It's quite a visual. <laughs> yeah, you, you, you know, it's like, you know, we've heard about all the stereotype stuff and all the stuff. I mean, that's old. Let's move on and go on to something else, you know. Quit making fun of people who are not your ethnicity, you know, or, or this or that, you know. I'm not saying don't be controversial. Right. By all means. I mm -hmm. mean, George Carlin's last four HBO specials were extremely... Uh, very opinionated yeah. and very uh, and and extreme and the best work he's ever done as mm -hmm. far as I'm concerned uh, and uh, but uh, I think you should be able to say whatever you want to say I mean you know when I came up uh, in the 80s and the early 90s everybody wanted to get on TV so mm -hmm. you had to be clean yeah to get on Seinfeld. TV uh -huh, like yeah Seinfeld. And, and you had to be clean to get on TV so everybody had working on their clean sets you know mm -hmm. every you know you get your your five your seven minute set you know all clean and nice and ready to go you know so speaking of your clean set mm -hmm. uh, four stand-up dads yeah is that clean, the clean for material? the most part okay, yeah and that's uh, can you tell us a little bit about your show yeah, I do a show with th uh, three other guys, guys I've known forever. Tim Bedore, who used to be a DJ oh, yeah? here on the Quake. Uh -huh. He now lives in Minnesota. Uh, uh, Milt Abel, who's a San Jose know. native. He lives uh -huh. up in Portland. And another guy, Kelly McDonald, who I met, who we all met when we were living in L.A. And we're all guys who've known each other for over 20 years. And we all have kids, you mm -hmm. know. And uh, I was working at Villa Montalvo opening for different musical acts, Al Jarreau and Natalie Cole and people like that. And they said, you know, the audience is like you. Why don't we do a show with just you in the carriage house which is a indoor place with like 300 seats i said great he goes but we need a theme and i thought immediately well how about if i bring these other guys with me and we do a show together and it and it it, it was it was great it was mm -hmm. so much fun plus we added like multimedia to it there's a powerpoint set to music oh, good, good, with all yeah. of our photos of us growing up as little kids up to now and then our families we have now all pictures of them and then uh, behind each comedian this, the screen stands still and there's pictures of their family members and people like that and we refer to them as we oh, do that's our great. act. that's great. And when is this show? This show, uh, we're doing one uh, on May 8th. That's mm -hmm. two nights before Mother's Day. Okay. What a better Remember gift that. for Mother's Day <laughs> than four more dads, right? That's and, always all. It could happen. It's it, like big it, love in reverse. Big love, right. There you go. Yeah. Uh, and uh, so we're doing it at the 142 Throckmorton Theater mm -hmm. which is in Mill Valley on May 8th. And then on Mother's Day itself, uh, we're doing two shows, one at 2 p.m. at the Sebastiani Theater in Sonoma. Oh, nice. And then uh, one at 7 p.m. at the Empress Theater in Vallejo. And you can get all the information on danstpaul.com. danstpaul.com, D-A-N-S-T-P-A-U-L.com. Very good. Well, we have a few minutes later. Uh, you were on Flubber. I was in Flubber. You were in Flubber. <laughs> yeah. Well, I big, big, big part. Yeah. Uh -huh. 15 minutes into the movie, I got on for like one minute and then I'm gone. That was you. That was me. That was you. Was it fun? It was a, it was a blast. You know what was the fun, best part about it was that uh, I, I play a next door neighbor, the Flubber Escapes from Robin Williams, who was the star, uh, his, his laboratory, and it, and it comes into my house through a, a, a screen mesh on the door <laughs> okay. and so it, it splits into a thousand pieces <laughs> and then I'm watching TV with my daughter and my my dog and and I pick up the my newspaper and I start swatting at the flubber you know and, and and then I see a little bit of it on the ground and I jump on it and I go bouncing a I go I go flying through the air into the wall I hit the wall I turn around I hit the wall I come down into a chair now I didn't do that part they had a stunt man do that. <laughs> you had a stunt man? Yeah. How cool. Could I you keep him for like a week? <laughs> I, it was so weird to watch a guy dressed exactly like me with a wig on, you know, just with a look like me and go and do the stunt. The stunt was incredible. I would never have done that. But it wow. Was incredible. Yeah. Because he if was they shot paid through you an enough. air cannon, you know. I don't know. If they uh, paid you enough, well, you'd do it. Yeah. I don't know. But, you know what? You should be in Parenthood. That's a new show that they're trying to. They just saw, shot the pilot or they're shooting they? it right now, actually. Oh, yeah? You'd be perfect in that. Oh, really? Yes, you should. Oh. I'll, I'll put in a good word for Thank you. Thank you. I'm sure that'll do the trick. <laughs> well, I might just do You never know. You never know. So are your mom and dad proud now? Oh, yeah. Well, my dad's passed away, but my mom's still, yeah, she's very proud. She's My mom's just happy. If I'm happy, she's happy. You know, as long as I'm happy doing what I'm doing, she doesn't care. You know, mm -hmm. she just, you know, I talk about my mom a lot in my act, so, you know. And your kids, your kids. Do you have funny kids? I well, Roy. We only have one. And okay. Roy, yeah, Roy's very funny. My sense of humor. He 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 took out an old promotional picture of mine. Uh huh. And he goes, you know, you look exactly the same. Oh, and sweet. I, I looked at. It, I go, I don't look twenty five now. He goes, no, you look fifty back then. <laughs> no. Thank you. Thank you That's very sweet. much. <laughs> That's not very nice. If you're watching, you got to give your dad a break. There, he looks Please. great. Please. Uh -huh. <laughs>